gives another example of a recurrence that we'll solve using the substitution method. This is a simpler example relative to the one that we've seen in the last several videos. We are given this recurrence t of n is twice of t of floor of n by 2 plus n. Let's say this applies for n greater than 1 and t of 1 is given to be 1. This is the base case or the boundary condition of the recurrence equation. Now suppose we guess that t of n is big O of n log n. How do we prove that this guess is correct? You can note that this recurrence is basically the uh, merge sort recurrence or almost the same as the merge sort recurrence. The difference being that we don't have a constant c with this n which doesn't make any difference anyway. And we have this additional floor operator here which we will see again doesn't make any difference to the asymptotic complexity of t of n. So let's try to prove that t of n is in big O of n log n. So what we need to prove is, we need to prove that there exists a constant greater than 0 such that For all n larger than some positive threshold n0, t of n is bounded from above by a, this constant multiple of n log n. This is what we want to prove. And we need to use induction on n to prove this formally. So let's first look at the base case of the induction. Let's start from n equal to 1. Is it true that t of 1 is less than or equal to c times 1 times log of 1? Well, t of 1 is equal to 1. And on the right hand side, we have c times 1 times log of 1, which is actually 0 because log of 1 is 0. Is 1 less than or equal to 0? No. So this inequality does not hold at n equal to 1. But this doesn't affect our claim because the claim is not that for all n t of n is less than or equal to cn log n. The claim is that this inequality applies beyond a certain n naught. So if it does not apply at n equal to 1, it means that we need to set this n naught to some value larger than 1. So let's see whether the inequality applies at the next higher value of n. Is t of 2 less than or equal to c times 2 times log of 2? Well, what is t of 2? t of 2 will be twice of t of 1 plus 2. So that will be some constant. It will be 4 or something. What about c times 2 times log of 2? This is nothing but 2c. So is this inequality valid? It will be valid if c happens to be greater than or equal to t of 2 divided by 2. If we choose a value of c larger than this constant value, then this inequality will hold at n equal to 2. Similarly, we can prove that t of 3 will be less than or equal to c times 3 times log of 3 if c is chosen to be larger than t of 3 divided by 3 times log of 3. In this case, um, in this case we are um, assuming that t of 3 will be calculated again using this recurrence. 
So it doesn't matter what the exact value of p of 3 is. We know that it's some constant. And we can continue like this, proving, proving this inequality at n equal to 4, 5, and so on. We don't know right now how many base cases we'll need to prove, but you know, whatever number of base cases we may require to prove, as long as it's some constant, we should be able to prove that this inequality holds from 2 onwards up to that value b, whatever it is, for the last base case. So let's assume the induction hypothesis. That is, let's assume that there exists a constant, a positive constant c, such that t of k is less than or equal to c k log k, where k can take values from 2 onwards right up to n minus 1. So we are using strong induction here again. We are assuming that this claim holds this claim holds for all values of the argument from 2 to n minus 1. And in the induction step, we need to argue that the claim holds at n as well. So, how would we prove that? We know that t of n is twice of t of the floor of n by 2 plus n. This is the recurrence given to us. Now, the floor of n by 2 is definitely going to be less than n. And if it turns out to be greater than or equal to 2, then we can use the induction hypothesis on T of the floor of n by 2. Right? We know, we have assumed that this inequality applies for values of the argument from 2 up to n minus 1. So if n by 2 is falls within this range, we can use the induction hypothesis and replace t of n by 2 by the upper bound as given by the induction hypothesis, which is c times the floor of n by 2 multiplied by log of the floor of n by 2. So we are replacing t of the floor of n by 2 by the right hand side of the induction hypothesis. And by doing so, we are making this expression larger and so this expression will now become greater than or equal to Tn. So Tn is less than or equal to twice of C times the floor of n by 2 times log of the floor of n by 2 plus n. Remember that we need to prove that t of n is less than or equal to, we need to prove that this is less than or equal to c n log n. Actually, we need to prove that t of n is less than or equal to c n log n. But if we are able to prove that this expression is less than or equal to c n log n, then we would have proven that t of n is less than or equal to c n log n by transitivity. So we can go on replacing this expression with something larger than it as long as we are able to show that the resulting expression is going to be eventually less than or equal to c n log n. So we can take out these floor operators. We can replace the floor of n by 2 by n by 2 and the floor of n by 2 by n by 2 here as well. Now in general, n by 2 will be greater than or equal to its floor. This is trivially true because the floor of n by 2 is nothing but the integer part of n by 2. So if we replace, if, if we remove the floor, we are actually replacing, we are replacing the, the floor of n by 2 by something larger than the floor of n by 2, which is n by 2. So the resulting expression is going to be either equal to or larger than this previous expression. So we have this expression is less than or equal to twice of c times n by 2 
times log of n by 2 plus n. Now why do we want to do this? We want to do this because we want to eventually get cn log n. So these four operators are a bit of a hurdle and so we need to remove them so that we come closer and closer to this form. And once we remove them, we can see that things get simplified. This two will cancel out with this two and we'll get cn times log of n by 2 plus n. Now this can be written as cn log n minus cn log 2. cn log 2 is nothing but cn because log 2 is 1. So cn log n minus cn plus n. This is what we get on the right hand side. So t of n is less than or equal to cn log n minus cn plus n. And we want to prove that this is less than or equal to cn log n. So when will this be true? This will be true if, cancelling out cn log n on both sides, this will be true if minus cn plus n is less than or equal to 0. That is, this will be true if cn is greater than or equal to n. Since n is positive, we can cancel n on both sides. So if we choose a value of c that's greater than 1, the claim is that t of n will be less than or equal to cn log n. That's what we've shown. So combining this constraint on c with the other constraints coming from the base case. How many base cases will there be? Well, since we assume that the floor of n by 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 2 to for us to use the induction hypothesis, we were assuming that n needs to be greater than or equal to 4. So as long as n is greater than or equal to 4, we can use this proof to say that t of n will be true at that particular value of n, assuming that c is greater than 1. This means that we can use t of 2 and t of 3 as the base cases. Since we can use the induction hypothesis here, provided n is greater than or equal to 4, that means for n less than 4, we have to ensure that every value of n less than 4 is under some base case. Of course, we saw that 1 did not satisfy the inequality, but n equal to 2 and 3 will satisfy the inequality, provided c is larger than these two constants. And at n equal to 4 onwards, we will just use the proof that we did in the induction step. So if we choose a value of c greater than or equal to the maximum of these three values, this value, this value, and this value, then, then we can say that we have indeed found a c that was positive such that for all values of n larger than or equal to 2, because 2 was our first base case, for all values of n larger than or equal to 2, t of n is bounded from above by cn log n. This means we have proven formally that t of n is in big O of n log n. So we have proven by induction or we have proven by the substitution method. Why did we call this the substitution method? Because we are taking the right hand side of the induction hypothesis and substituting this smaller problem by the right hand side of the induction hypothesis. That's why it's called the substitution method. So from the substitution method or from mathematical induction, we have formally proven that t of n is in big O of n log n. 
and that is what we wanted to prove. So I hope this illustrates once more how we employ the substitution method in proving that a particular guess is the right one, if it is the right one.